Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ash Shem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ash Shem, Rakakwadash. Double honor to the elders and apostles, the great most, and the well, peace and blessings in the elect of Israel. Shalom and the Baba Ball. Back at it when I listen to the spirit of power of Yahweh, Ba'ash Shem, Yahweh Shai, Lord willing, this video is edifying. And I just want to touch on this through the spirit. Okay, this is the impromptu lesson. A hey, judgment can go down anywhere in the earth. All right, judgment can go down anywhere in the earth. All right, I'll get the scripture. Okay, because that's what's getting ready to happen. The whole world is getting ready to be judged. It's not just going to happen in the land of Babylon the Great. So for all you jakes that want to flee Babylon because you think that you're going to be able to escape the tribulation. All right, you're not going to, hey man. <laughs> that doesn't stop you, Habashmashai, from judging you, man. All right. This is um. This is uh, Luke twenty-one and thirty-five. I'll start at verse um thirty-four. Luke twenty-one and thirty-four, and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting, and drunkenness, and the and cares of this life, so that that day come upon you unawares. And that's going into how you know we're supposed to be conducting ourselves properly in this ministry, all right, and doing the things that the Lord requires of us. Verse thirty-five, for as a snare shall it come on all. Them that dwell on the face of the whole earth, man. That's right. Okay, so this the day of the Lord is gonna come as a snare to them who are not watching. Like Yahweh said, I come as a thief in the night. But look how it's notice how it said what? That dwell on uh, come on all of them that dwell on the face of the earth, man. Alright, this is oh man, this is a fire one. Psalms 105 and 7. He is the Lord Yahweh, our power. His judgments are in all the earth, man. The Lord's judgments is in all the earth, man. Not just in one place. Okay? I right, get get some more precepts. This is Jeremiah 23 and 24 it says, "Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him?" saith the Lord. Do not I feel heaven and earth saith the lord okay so the lord's spirit fulfills the heavens and the earth the scriptures will call him the god of the heaven and the earth man all right so the lord's judgment could be anywhere man think about it you know if lightning can strike anywhere the lord wants the lightning to strike that's a form of judgment okay so that alone goes to show you that the lord's judgment could be anywhere all right so, you know, hey, that alone, man, okay? Because no matter if you stay in the hood, no matter if you stay in the suburbs, guess what? You, your ass could still get struck, uh, struck by a lightning bolt, you know, stricken by a lightning bolt, man. That's the judgment of the Lord, okay? So, hey, you know, just because you might stay in the suburbs and you live in an area that's less prone to crime, if you will, doesn't mean nothing because you can still get judged by your how about Shemel Shai, man, all right? No one can escape the Lord's hand. All right? Nobody can escape the Lord's hand. Okay? And I want to get another scripture. Second Chronicles 16, verse 9. This is for the eyes of the Lord, Yahweh, run to and fro throughout the whole earth to shew himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein thou hast done foolishly, therefore... From hence thou shalt have wars. Right? So it says his eye has run to and fro throughout the whole earth, man. All right? Going to show you what? That the Lord, his spirit, is his spirit and his angels is going throughout the whole earth. Okay? Running to and fro. You know? And literally. Okay? And the angels, they minister the judgment of the Lord. Okay? Let's get the scripture. Let's get the scripture. Psalms 103, starting at verse 20. Bless the Lord, Yahweh, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. All right. Verse 21. Bless ye the Lord, Yahweh, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, Yahweh, all his works in all places of his dominion. Okay. Is not the judgment of the Lord a part of his works? 
And does not the Lord have dominion over both heaven and the earth? The scriptures say whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. And the scriptures talk about how, you know, that the most high, that his throne is inestimable, inestimable. Meaning you can't put a number on the most highest throne. Like, you know how they say, okay, this house is such and such square feet. You can't say that about the most highest throne. Because his dominion is without measure. Because the Lord, he He rules over everything. And another thing, the most high, he dwells in the uh, fourth dimension. Which is really outer space. Okay? And they say, Esau even, Esau, scientists, they even said how basically space is never ending. You know, space just continues and continues and continues and continues. It, it's always expanding. And that's spiritual because why? You know, especially during the times in the kingdom when we're, you know, overpopulating, so to speak. All right. We you know we're going to be fruitful and multiply. You know, our seed is going to inherit different galaxies and planets and other stuff like that, man. That's why how I said in my father's house are many mansions, man. And let me get the scripture real quick. So, hey, really, judgment can go down anywhere, man. It don't even have to be on the planet Earth. Judgment could go down anywhere. All right, this is Second Ezra 8. It's on that verse. Um, 20. O Lord, thou that dwellest in everlastingness, which beholdest from above things in the heaven and in the air. Okay? So the Lord, he beholds everything. Hey, does not the scripture say... That the Most High, He beholds the children of men. Get that scripture. Psalms 11 and 4. The Lord Yahweh is in His holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. Talking about in, in outer space, man. Okay? His eyes, and also the fourth dimension. His eyes behold, His eyelids try the children of men. So the Lord, He could see us on earth, man. And his angels is watching for us, too, because his angels are like witnesses, man. Because the scriptures say, with two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Well, the angels are the Lord's witnesses. Okay, not that he needs any witnesses because he's the most high, you know, who can witness against him. But nonetheless, the most high is still just and he has his witnesses, which is his heavenly angels. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout all the earth, man, and throughout all the heavens. All right, it says, whose throne is inestimable, whose glory may not be comprehended, before whom the host of angels stand with trembling. Okay? You're right. The host of angels stand before you, Habashmashai, with trembling, man. And they do his pleasure. The demons tremble in fear before the Lord. James, James, uh... 2 and 19 thou believest that there is one power thou do as well the devils also believe and tremble yeah the host of angels stand and tremble before you how about Shemuel Shai okay and they do his pleasure the Lord tells them to do something and they do it they don't ask questions they just get it done this is Rocker Ecclesiastes 39 starting at verse 28 there be spirits that are created for vengeance well first and foremost you have to ask yourself who created these spirits <laughs> Okay, let's get the scripture. This is Rock Ecclesiastes, or it's like an 18, Ezekiel, Ezekiel 18 and 4. Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Okay, and the angels, they don't die because they're not corruptible. They don't sin. They don't go off, including the demons. The demons technically don't sin. All right, because what's a part of their charge? To do evil. So when they do evil, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're not sinning. All right, but, on, but um, you know, pretty much going into how what? All souls are the Lord's. And angels, they have souls too. They're spirits too. All right, the Most High, he's known as the Father of Spirits. Anything... Anything in existence ultimately is your Yahweh Shemel shots. All right. So if you're if you have something of yours, aren't you going to keep tabs on it? You know, if you care about it, because scriptures say how the Most High He careth for all alike, both small and great. So anything that's in existence, the Most High He He ha He keeps tabs on it, man. Judgment could go down anywhere in the earth, man. Okay. It's Rock Ecclesiastes 39. Man, that's heavy when you really think about it, because that goes to show you what? That the Lord is watching. 
He's watching at all times. Sirach Ecclesiastes 38, 39, and 28. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. Okay? Appease the wrath of him that made him. Going to what? That, there's, that his angels do all his pleasure, man. Fire and hail and famine and death. All these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions. Serpents and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction. They shall rejoice in his commandment and they shall be ready upon earth when need is. And when their time has come, they shall not transgress his word, man. They shall be ready upon earth when need is. Going to show you what? Not saying they shall be ready upon uh, a certain location on the earth, ready upon the earth because judgments go out throughout the four corners of the globe, man. And you're going to see judgments going out throughout the four corners of the globe. All right. Because what's coming? That chip, which is going to come upon all the world. Revelation 3, son of verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, meaning we kept the Howard Shai's sufferings. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Right. Not just them in Babylon. Okay. All the world. All right. But if you're of the elect, guess what? You're going to be okay. Because guess what? The elect is not just here in America. I'm going to show you what? Judgment can happen all over the world. Because technically, you know, the elect getting beamed up, that's judgment too. But that's a righteous judgment. You know, it's Matthew 24 and verse uh, 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, referring to the times of Jacob's trouble, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light because the missiles are going to black out the sky. All the soot and the debris and the smoke from the missiles is going to black out the sky. It says, and the stars shall fall from heaven. The stars falling from heaven is referring to the missiles falling out the sky, you know, dropping down upon Babylon the Great and various other places in the world. Going to show you what judgment can happen all over the world. And especially, and man, and man that's, a, that's a cut to you people who think just because you stay in the suburbs, you can't get judged because guess what? All of Babylon's gonna get burnt up, whether you lived in the hood or not. Still gonna get burnt up. Matter of fact, ooh, man. Let me get this. All right. Job 20, I'll start at verse 23. When he is about to fill his belly, go and Esau, he's gonna ultimately fill his belly or about to fill his belly, he's gonna set up his new world order. To a certain degree during the times of Jacob's trouble. It's like Yahweh I said, immediately after the tribulation of those days, right? It says, when he is about to fill his belly, the Most High shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him, which is the missiles. Okay, Psalms the 11th chapter tells you that the Most High's uh, fury, his wrath rather, is the missiles. Fire, you know, that's a part of his wrath. Okay. It says, and shall rain it upon him while he is eating. So while Esau is setting up his new world order, the Lord is going to cause his fury to come upon him. When Esau is at his highest peak, noonday, okay? Because noonday is when the sun is at its highest point. And sun represents rulership, okay? That's why the scriptures talk about what? Benjamin shall devour the prey in the, in the morning. Okay, meaning in the morning or the beginning of our rulership, the tribe of Benjamin, along with the other tribes, is going to devour the prey, which is the heathen, Zephaniah 3 and 8. Okay. And at night, he's going to divide the spoils, meaning what? In the nighttime of our kingdom, in the latter end of our kingdom, we're going to be dividing the spoils of the heathen, man. All right. This is uh, uh, Amos 8 and 9. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord power, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon. And I will darken the earth in the clear day. So when Esau is at his highest point, he's, he's going to cause his son to go down, meaning that he's going to um, take Esau at a rulership when he's at his highest point, which is his new world order. OK, it says when he, he says he shall flee from the iron weapon and the bow of steel shall strike him through We're referring to the missiles it is drawn and cometh out of the body yet the glittering sword cometh out of his gall terrors are upon him the glittering sword referring to the missiles all darkness shall be hid in his secret places a fire not blown shall consume him it shall go ill with him that is left 
in his tabernacle. Yeah, so anybody left on the soils of America when the missiles get shot off during that time of Judgment Day, it's going to go ill with you. Okay, don't matter if you stay in the hood, don't matter if you stay in the suburbs. All right, you're going to be through. And does not is that not a part of the curses? This curse said what? Curse shall thou be in the city, curse shall thou be in the field. Let me get that scripture real quick. Deuteronomy 20 and 16. Curse shall thou be in the city, and curse shall thou be in the field. And that's twofold because it's going into how you know us as the nation of Israel, we were cursed in the land of Israel when them when our enemies came up against us, but as well, we cursed all around the world. But going back to the elect, 144, call Lion Light Rush Mashai, that's that's a part of the curses. We were scattered amongst the four corners of the globe. But guess what? Yahweh is gonna gather us. Abu Rahza, we'd be a part of that number. Matthew 24 and uh verse 29, continuing on, the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. The earth is gonna shake, and these uh wicked elites and their rulership is gonna be shaken out of place. In verse 30, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Yeah, not just Babylon, all the tribes of the earth. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the heaven to the other. Going to show you what? That the elect is scattered abroad, man. So judgment is really going out throughout the four corners of the earth. Revelation 7 and 1. And after these, I, after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living power. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our power in their foreheads, man. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they were sealed in hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel, man. So guess what the angels holding back the destruction from the four winds from the four corners of the earth not just the destruction here in babylon but all around the world man because judgment is going to go out go go all, all around the world all right I'll get the scripture on that okay jeremiah 25 started at verse um 27 really you know, it's best to start at around verse 14. All right. Because the Lord has prophesied judgment against all the nations. So I'll, I'll start at verse 13. Jeremiah 25 and 13. And I will bring upon that land all my words which I have pronounced against it. Even all that is written in this book, which Jeremiah has prophesied against all the nations. All right. And that's talking about the land of Babylon the Great. Okay. Ancient Babylon, all right, which is modern day Iraq, and also modern day spiritual Babylon, which is America. Okay, the Lord going to judge this whole world. All right, verse 14 For many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of them also, and I will recompense them according to their deeds and according to the works of their own hands. For thus saith the Lord, power of Israel unto me, take the wine cup of this fury at my hand and cause all the nations, all the nations to whom I send thee to drink it. And they shall drink and be moved and be mad because of the sword that I will send among them. Going into what? Judgment. Then took I the cup of the Lord's hands and made all the nations to drink unto whom the Lord has sent me. Hey, does not the scripture say, um, give ear, O inhabitants of the earth? You know, that's Isaiah uh, 34, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see something real quick. Bear with me, Baba Kusha. All right. Judgment is about to be going out throughout all the earth, man. Isaiah 8 is, whew, man, come on, man. You can't make this up. This is Isaiah 34. And um, one, come near ye nations to hear and hearken ye people. Let the earth hear. And all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, not just Babylon, all of the world, man. Anywhere in the world can get judged by the Lord and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. That's right. And does not the scriptures also say that what? That the Lord have a controversy 
with the nations, man. All right? Not just Babylon the Great. Okay? So judgment can happen anywhere in the earth. Jeremiah 20. Oh, same chapter. Let me just. I'll, I'll hold on, on that scripture, man. That's a spirit, though. It's Jeremiah 25 and verse 14. For many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of them also, and I will recompense them according to their deeds and according to the works of their own hands. For thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, power of Israel unto me, take the wine cup of this fury at my hand and cause all the nations to whom I send thee to drink it. Okay? And they shall drink and be moved and be mad because of the sword that I will send among them. And that and that 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 cup is that red wine of the Lord's indignation. All right. Hey, did not Yahweh Shai? This is not the scripture talking about how Yahweh Shai is gonna reap the harvest and the sickle in the earth, not just in Babylon alone, in the earth, man. But Babylon is that main place for the destruction. Okay. But in the whole earth, Yahweh Shai is gonna reap that sickle. Then took I the uh, like you. Then took I the cup at the Lord's hand and made all the nations to drink unto whom the Lord Yahweh had sent me, to wit Jerusalem. So he started off with Israel. Scripture says judgment is going to begin at the house of the Lord. First Peter four and seventeen, and the cities of Judah and the kings thereof and the princes thereof to make them a desolation and astonishment and hissing and a curse as it is this day. Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and his servants. And his princes and all his people and all the mingled people and all the kings of the land of Uz and all the kings of the land of the Philistines and Eshkelon and Azar and Ekron and the remnant of Ashdod, Edom and Moab and the children of Ammon and the, all the kings of Tyrus and all the kings of Zidon and, all, and the kings of the isles which are beyond the sea, the Dan and Tima and Buz and all that are in the utmost corners. And all the kings of Arabia, and all the kings of the mingled people that dwell in the desert, and all the kings of Zimri, and all the kings of Elam, and all the kings of the Medes, and all the kings of the north, far and near, one with another, and all the kingdoms of the world, which are upon the face of the earth, and the king of Shishak shall drink after them. Therefore thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, of hosts, the power of Israel, drink ye and be drunken and spew and fall and rise no more because of the sword which I will send among you. And it shall be if they refuse to take the cup at thine hand to drink, then shall thou say unto them, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh of hosts, ye shall certainly drink. Okay, for lo, I begin to bring evil on the city which is called by my name. I'm going to show you what that judgment starts at the house of the Lord. Okay, uh, Psalm 75 and 8 For in the hand of the Lord, Yahweh, there is a cup, and the wine is red, it is full of mixture, and he poureth out of the same. But the dregs thereof, all the wicked of the earth, shall wring them out and drink them. All right, so that cup of judgment is that red wine of the Lord's judgment. All right, and the missile fire is a part of that cup that these nations are going to have to drink. It says, For lo, I begin to bring evil on the city which is called by my name, and should ye be utterly unpunished? Ye shall not be unpunished, for I will call for a sword upon all the inhabitants of the earth, saith the Lord of hosts. Why is that, man? Because these devils who are running the earth, scripture say what? The earth is given to the hand of the wicked, and these devils are not running the earth correctly. So judgment is going to come upon all the earth. Sirach Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 4, The power of the earth... Not just one land, the whole earth, man. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord. And in due time, he will set over it one that is profitable. And that starts with the nation. Uh, that starts with Yahweh Shai and the nation of Israel. Every man in their own particular order. Okay. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord, man. You get this next one. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, starting at verse 1. Hear, O therefore, O ye kings, and understand, learn. Ye that be judges of the ends of the earth, right? Not just one place we're gonna because the elect, you know, through the spirit of power, Yahweh Shemashai, we're gonna rule all over the world. Operat is we beat those men under Yahweh Bashmel Shai. Every man in their own particular order. So judgment is gonna be going out throughout the four corners of the earth, man. You know, especially during these times. It says, Give ear. Ye that rule the people and glory in the multitude of nations, for power is given of you. Of the Lord 
and sovereignty from the highest, who shall try your works and search out your counsels. Because being ministers of his kingdom, ye have not judged aright, nor kept the law, nor walked under the counsel of the Most High. Horribly and speedily shall he come upon you, for a sharp judgment shall be to them that be in high places. Okay? For mercy will soon pardon the meanest, but mighty men shall be mightily tormented. For he which is the Lord over all shall fear no man's person. Neither shall he stand in awe of any man's greatness, for he hath made the small and great, and careth for all alike, man. But a sore trial shall come upon the mighty. You see what I'm saying? Unto you, therefore, O kings, do I speak, that ye may learn wisdom and not fall away. Because wisdom and righteousness is what establishes the throne. All right? But when you're trying to uphold, because the earth has a certain standard to be, to be kept with. You have to uphold the earth under a righteous vibration, under a righteous standard, so that the earth can, uh, you know, <clears throat> basically, it could be a well-oiled machine. But when you're running the earth in wickedness, then it's not going to function properly, and that's going to cause judgment before the Lord. Okay? Um, let's see. Go back to this precept. I brought desire for the Lord. Well, I'll get this one, too. Ecclesiastes 5 and... uh. I start at verse 8, it says, If thou seest the oppression of the poor and violent perverting of judgment and justice in a province, marvel not at the matter, for he that is higher than the highest regardeth, and there be higher than they. And even and Esau, his oppression of the poor and violent perverting of judgment and justice is not just in the Babylon alone, but all over the world. Okay? Scripture say Babylon had been a golden cup and made all the nations of the earth to be drunken, man. Verse 9, Moreover, the profit of the earth is for all not just for those in one area, but for all, right? It says, the king himself is served by the field, you know? But the Lord cursed the Lord cursed the field for man's sake. He cursed the ground for Adam's sake. See? So judgment is not just in one place, man. Judgment is going to be all over the world. And it's not going to be in one city either, you know? It's not going to just be in the ghettos, so to speak. It's going to be in the suburbs too, okay? Second Ezra 16, starting at... Verse uh, 67, or I'll start at, uh, I'll start at, um, I'll start at verse, man, let me see. I'll start at, uh, 16, second as 16, and, woo, man, I'll start at verse 50, second as 16 and 50, man, I'll start at verse 40. All right, let's lock you. Man, I got to start at, uh, I'll start at 37, let's lock you. <laughs> you know, it's just a lot of meat on this bone. Second Ezra 16 and 37. Behold, the plagues draw nigh and are not slack. As when a woman with child in the ninth month bringeth forth her son. What are the plagues? The plagues is the judgments of the Lord. It says, as when a woman with child in the ninth month bringing forth her son with two or three hours of her birth, great pains can pass her womb, which pains when the child cometh forth, they slack not a moment. Okay, because that's what the time of Jacob's trouble is going to be like. It's going to be like a time of birth pains, man. It's going to be a short, intense time of judgment. Okay, it says, even so shall the plagues be slack to come upon the earth, not just one place, but upon the earth. The world shall mourn and sorrow shall come upon it on every side. Judgment is going to be everywhere. Oh, my people, hear my word. Make you ready to thy battle. Talking about during the time of Jacob's trouble, we have to spiritually prepare ourselves, man, to be ready because Jacob's trouble is going to be a time of war. That's why Mark of the Archangel is going to have to stand up, man, because we're going to need divine intervention during the times of Jacob's trouble, man. All around the world, not just here in Babylon, not just in the ghettos, but in the suburbs, too, because judgment can go out throughout the four corners of the earth. And judgment does go out throughout the four corners of the earth, man. All right. Look at the death rate in different countries and stuff like that. That's showing you what judgment is going out over out the four corners of the earth, man. Not just in Babylon alone. OK. You know, it says. All my people hear my word, make you ready to die battle. I'm going to show you that you have to prepare yourself for Jacob's trouble as well. And those evils be even as pilgrims upon the earth. We're going to be as pilgrims upon the earth. We're going to be nomadic, man. We're not just going to be in one area. We're going to be pilgrims. 
He that selleth, let him be as he that fleeth away, and he that buyeth as one that will lose. He that occupieth merchandise is he that hath no profit by it, and he that buildeth as he that shall not dwell therein. He that soweth is if he should if he should not reap. So also he that planteth the vineyard as he that shall not gather the grapes. Because why? Everything, the fat, like the scriptures say what? The fashion of this world passeth away. That's pretty much what the scripture is saying. Everything that you've built up upon this side, if it's not, you know, spiritual riches, is going to pass away. Everything you invested to on this side, if it's not spiritual investments, is going to pass away. All right. That's why the Lord said, make you ready to die battle. You know, build up your spiritual investments. All right. It says, they that marry as that they is they that shall get no children and they that marry not as the widowers. You know, hey, the scripture say what? Um... Basically, they that have wives be as though they had none, man. And therefore, they that labor, labor in vain. Yeah, all of this is really vanity, you know. If it ain't for Yahweh and Shai, it's really vanity. All right, it says, For strangers shall reap their fruits and spoil their goods, overthrow their houses, and take their children captives. For in captivity and famine shall they get children, man. And they that occupy their merchandise with robbery, the more they deck their cities, their houses, their possessions, and their own persons, the more will I be angry with them. For their sin, saith the Lord. Like as a whore envieth a right, honest, and virtuous woman, so shall righteousness hate iniquity when she decketh herself and shall accuse her to her face. When she when he cometh that shall defend him that diligently searcheth out every sin upon earth, man. Not just one area upon all the earth. And therefore be ye not like unto their psyche, be ye not like thereunto. Nor to the works thereof, for yet a little while, and iniquity shall be taken away out of the earth. Not just in one area, man, out of the whole earth. And righteousness shall reign among you. Let not the sinner say that he hath not sinned, for Yahweh shall burn coals of fire upon his head, which is those missiles, which say before the Lord Yahweh power and his glory, I have not sinned. Behold, the Lord knoweth all the works of men. Their imaginations, their thoughts, and their hearts, which spake but a but the word, let the earth be made, and it was made, let the heaven be made, and it was created. In his word were the stars made, and he knoweth the number of them. He searched the deep and the treasures thereof, he hath measured the sea and what it containeth, he hath shut the sea in the midst of the waters, and with his word hath he hanged the earth upon the waters. All right. He spreadeth out the heavens like a vault upon the waters, hath he founded it. In the desert hath he made springs of water and pools upon the tops of the mountains, that the floods might pour down from the high rocks to water the earth. He made man and put his heart in the midst of the body and gave him breath, life, and understanding. Yeah, the spirit of the almighty power, which made all things and searched out all hidden things in the secrets of the earth. Yeah. So even the Lord, he's searching out the hidden things in the secrets of the earth, man. How much more all around around the world that is known. OK, because there are certain parts of the like sure say there are certain parts of the world where the line have not tread. All right. This is. uh. This, I think, is in the book of Job. Job 28 and 8, it says, The lion's whelp hath not trodden it, nor the fierce lion passed by it. Ooh, I'll start at verse 7. So Job 28 7, there is a path which no fowl knoweth, which the vulture's eye have not seen, the lion's whelp have not trodden it, nor the fierce lion passed by it. Okay, that's right. So there's certain places on the earth where it is not even known to mankind, where the Lord just has hidden. Because think about it. Um, there's Esau has not has only explored about uh, you know a small percentage of the ocean floor. I'm not even the well. If I'm not mistaken, he only uh, explored about one percent of the ocean floor. But if I'm not mistaken, he explored maybe about five percent of the ocean in its entirety. So think about how much percentage of the ocean is yet to be d discovered, man. You know. But the Most High, He knows everything. He knows all that because His eyes is beholding all that, man. You know, the good and the evil. Let me get that scripture real quick through the spirit. All right. 
Proverbs 15 and 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. All right. So if the Lord's eyes is in every place, that means judgment is in every place, man. All right. Just like how you could go on Google Earth and go put in the coordinate, the coordination or the coordinates of a certain place and, you know, you know, be able to zoom in on that place through the satellites. Well, guess what? The most I gave Esau that technology, man. So how much more does the most I have? You know, to search in and zoom in on certain places and stuff like that, man, and see what's going on, you know. And he got the angels there reporting for him, too. OK. Now, it says second Ezra 16. And verse 62. Yeah, the spirit of all my power, which made all things and searched out all hidden things in the secrets of the earth. Surely he knoweth your inventions and what you think in your hearts, even them that sin and would hide their sin. Therefore, have the Lord exactly searched out all your works and he will put you all to shame. And when your sins are brought forth, ye shall be ashamed before men and your own sins shall be your accusers in that day. What you will ye do or how will ye hide your sins before you howl by Shemeshah and his angels? Why? Because the Lord's eyes run to and fro throughout the whole earth, man. Alright You can't hide from the Lord and his angels man Behold the most high himself is the judge Fear him leave off from your sins And forget your iniquities to meddle no more with them forever So shall Yahweh Shai lead you forth And deliver you from all trouble For behold the burning wrath of a great multitude Is kindled over you And they shall take away certain of you And feed you being idle with things offered unto idols That's Esau coming down with that great wrath The martial law troops So on and so forth all right, and he's going to snatch away certain brothers into them FEMA camps, man. And they're going to try to force the chip upon you. All right, and they that consent unto them, meaning the sellouts of our people, shall be had in derision and in reproach and trodden underfoot. For there shall be in every place and in the next cities. All right, so it's going to be in the ghettos and in the suburbs, door to door. Okay. For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. They shall be like madmen sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Yeah, the martial law troops going to be breaking in through people's doors, you know, uh, rummaging through people's stuff, snatching up people's wives and children, and snatching people up three o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning. While they're sleeping in their boxers or butt ass naked, lacking, you know. But the Lord, he's going to protect his his elect, man. All right. It says, for they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Then shall they be known who are my chosen and they shall be tried as gold in the fire. Hear, O ye, my beloved, saith the Lord, behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for Yahweh Bashem is your guide, and the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord, power. Let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves, man. That's right. So the Lord is like, look, don't be afraid. This, you know, this time of trouble is coming, and I'm going to be a guide to those who keep my commandments and precepts. But, you know, hey, this time of trouble is coming, man. The Lord is getting ready to judge this whole world. Okay, so let me go back to that Jeremiah or will. Jeremiah 25. All right, Jeremiah 25. And um, twenty nine for lo, I begin to bring evil in the city, which is called by my name. Meaning he's going to start with judgment with Israel. And should ye be utterly unpunished? See, look, the Lord says he's going to bring evil upon the city, which is called by his name. Is not Israel scattered amongst the four corners of the earth, man? Let's get the priest to back it up. And we read Matthew 24, where it says he's going to gather his elect from the four winds. We read James. I mean, we read uh, Revelation. Now we're going to get James. James 1 and 1. And there's plenty of scriptures backing up how Israel is scattered amongst the four corners of the earth. James 1 and 1, James, a servant of the Most High and of the Lord Yahweh Shemashiach, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. Okay, so the Lord said he's going to bring evil upon the city called by his name. And guess what? That city is scattered amongst the four corners of the globe. Going to, that alone goes to show you that judgment can happen anywhere in the world, man. All right, got another one real quick through the Spirit. Amos chapter 3 
in verse 6, it's like, you yeah. Amos 3 and 6, it says, um, Shall the trumpet be blown in the city, and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city, and the Lord Yahweh have not done it? That's right. So if any evil happens in a city, guess what? The Most High, he was the author of it. <laughs> okay? He was the one who sanctioned it to happen. The scriptures say not even a bird can fall out the sky lest the heavenly father without without the heavenly father's approval. No. Howard Shai said that. Okay? So you know, roughly paraphrase. Get the scripture. Matthew 10 and 29 are not two sparrows sold for a farthing. You know, which is a which is a low amount of money. It says, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. That's right. So a sparrow can't even fall out of the sky unless the heavenly father sanctions it, man. That's why Yahweh said we're of more value than many sparrows. So if the Lord don't even let a sparrow fall out the sky, then guess what, man? Whatever comes upon us, you gotta think, hey, this it was the Lord's will that it happened unto us. You see what I'm saying? And the Lord said, we're of more value than many sparrows, man. So if the Lord be watching after the birds, he's definitely going to watch after his elect, man. All right. It says, for lo, I begin to bring evil in the city, which is called by my name. And should ye be utterly unpunished, shall ye be, shall ye shall not be unpunished. For I will call for a sword upon all the inhabitants of the earth, saith the Lord of hosts. All the inhabitants of the earth, man, not just in one place. Therefore prophesy thou against them all these words and say unto them, the Lord shall roar from on high and utter his voice from his holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation. He shall give a shout as they that tread the grapes. And that's a precept to Isaiah 63. You know, that's a precept to, um, you know, Psalms 78 and 65. Then the Lord awake as one out of sleep like a mighty man that shouteth by reason of wine. And he smote his enemies in the hinder parts and he made them a he put them to a perpetual reproach. That's the Lord smiting Babylon. Okay? Because Babylon is the hinder most of the nations. Alright? It says, um, it says, and also uh, Revelation 14 talks about them treading the grapes. Uh, Joel talks about Babylon being a threshing floor. Jeremiah talks about Babylon being a threshing floor. You know, um, <clears throat> Isaiah 63 refers to Edom being treaded by grapes by Yahushai. Revelation 19 talks about Yahushai is going to tread the fierceness and the wine and the wrath of the almighty power. <clears throat> All right. Verse 20, 31, it says, A noise shall come even to the ends of the earth, for the Lord hath a controversy with the nations. Plural. Not just one nation. With the nations. He will plead with all flesh. He will give them that are wicked to the sword, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation. Meaning, hey, shall there not be evil in the city and the Lord have not done it? So the Lord said evil is going to go forth from nation to nation. Not just in one area, man. All over the world. And a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. The whirlwind is referring to the missiles as well as the, the uh, so-called UFOs, man. And it says, And the slain of the Lord Yahweh shall be at that day from one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamented, neither gathered, nor buried. They shall be dung upon the ground. Yeah, it's going to be looking like the walking dead. Okay? It's going to be looking like the walking dead, man. Where you're just going to see dead bodies all over the place, man. All right? So judgment is going to happen over the four, the four corners. You can't, you, there's no flee, there's no fleeing from the Lord's wrath. Is Isaiah 66. In verse 15, for behold, the Lord Yahweh will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with his fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. And we read earlier that the Lord has indignation towards all the nations, man, and their armies. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh. Do they only eat swine's flesh here in Babylon the Great, or do they not eat swine flesh in other countries, man? And the abomination and the mouth shall be consumed together, saith the Lord, man. That's right. Okay? That's right, man. This scripture is coming to my mind. Jeremiah 16 and 16. Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord. And that's what you're seeing now. 
you're seeing the elect being those fishers. Like Yahushua said, I'll make you fishers of men. And that's over the four corners of the earth. You're seeing the men of the Lord being raised up teaching over the four corners of the earth. Did not the Lord said that he made Jeremiah a prophet to the nations? Well, the men of the Lord are the same way. Because you have, you know, I, I myself personally, all right, and me being a younger brother in the faith, how much more an older brother in the faith, but I myself personally have had people comment on my videos or repost my videos from different countries, man. So guess what? The elect is being fished, okay? So that's that's a form of judgment going out through the earth. Because why? What happens after the elect become what happens after the elect stop fishing? Jeremiah 16 and 16. Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. It said every mountain and every hill, not just here in Babylon the Great. For mine eyes are upon all their ways. They are not hid from my face, neither is their iniquity hid from mine eyes. That's right. So, like, look, I see all that. <laughs> the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the earth. Proverbs 15 3. The eyes of the Lord behold the good and the evil, man. All right. Verse 18. And I will first, and says, and first I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double. Because they have defiled my land. These different heathens have defiled the Lord's land. All right. It says, and it says they have filled mine inheritance, which is the which the Lord's inheritance is the children of Israel. Deuteronomy 32 and 9 for the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance, man. All right. From the following of the ewes, great with young, he brought him to feed Jacob, his people in Israel, his inheritance, man. All right. Jeremiah 10 and 16. The portion of Jacob is not like them, meaning the Lord, Yahweh, for he is the former of all things. That's referring to the Most High, Yahweh. Okay. That's really talking about the Most High. But it applies to Israel being the former of all things because, you know, we're the Lord's people. But really, this scripture is, at, is really talking about the most high. Because notice when you read it in context, what does it say? It says in Israel is the rod of his inheritance. So the subject is Yahweh. Because it tells you next, the Lord Yahweh hosts is his name. So his, the, his is the subject. What's his name? Yahweh. He is, he exists. All right. You know, Jeremiah 51 and 19, the portion of Jacob was not like them, for he is the form of all things in Israel, is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord, Yahweh of hosts is his name. Second, Ezra 8 and 16, for and for thine inheritance, for whose cause I am mourned, and for Israel, who is the Lord's inheritance, for whom I am heavy, for Jacob, for whose sake I am troubled. Strong Ecclesiastes 24 and 8. This is wisdom. It says, so the creator of all things gave me a commandment. And he that made me cause my tabernacle to rest and said, let thy dwelling be in Jacob and thine inheritance in Israel. And guess what, man? Israel is supposed to be the judge of the earth. So guess what? Israel is scattered amongst the four corners. So guess what? By that, def by that, by default, judgment is going out throughout the four corners of the earth, man. Because the Lord said we'd be cursing the city and cursing the field. All right. Because look, we, we're not even in our own land and we're still suffering the curses, man. <laughs> that right there is a testament to show you that judgment can go out throughout the four corners of the earth, man. Not just in one place. Jeremiah 16 and uh, 18, it says, They have filled mine inheritance with the carcasses of the detestable and abominable things, man. Meaning what? These heathen, they're feeding us, they're feeding us, um, they're feeding us detestable and abominable things, man. Which is that swine flesh, the mouth, so on and so forth, man. Okay? Through the spirit. You know? So that's the point on that right there. All right? So, hey, you know, that's just a little something I wanted to touch on, man. Through the spirit. So, hey, Lord willing, this video is at a fine. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to you. How about you, Shai? I'm sure there's so much more precepts I could have pulled to back this up, but you know, this is a little impromptu through the spirit, man. Judgment can go out throughout the four corners of the earth and will go out throughout the four corners of the earth, not just in one place. Shalom and a Baba Ball.